it's all changed viewers. <laughs> Here is that change. We have been offered that Nottingham Forest job. Something I wasn't expecting by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a job I'm going to take. Working towards winning the Champions League, this would get us back into Europe. As much as I've enjoyed the short time here at Phoenix and turning things around for them and making them survive, this is a much bigger opportunity for us to go on and hit the ultimate goals in this journeyman save and win that Champions League. We've got £40 million to spend. It's the middle of January of £300,000 a week. We're being offered a one-year contract on £1,500. Let's start these negotiation, viewers. Do, do you know what? We'll see if we can get two. Will they, will they give us two years? We'll suggest the terms. They want to give us one year. Yeah, we'll, we'll accept it. One-year deal, then. We're going, to, we're going to Nottingham Forest. Let's just have a quick look at how we did get on at our career here at Phoenix in this whistle-stop tour of South America. So we were in charge at Phoenix for a total, well, so far, 84 days, 8 games played, 4 wins, 3 draws, 1 loss, 22 goals scored, just 9 conceded with a goal difference of plus 13 and a 50% win ratio. This means our total career stats at the moment over the three clubs, Boa Vista, Bordeaux, and Phoenix, 203 games, 81 wins, 40 draws, 82 losses, 262 goals scored, 281 conceded with a win ratio of, well, win percentage of 39%. Hopefully at Forest we can turn things around for them and we'll, when we get appointed, we will have a look at the squad. Join me again in a minute and I shall see you in Nottingham. Welcome to Nottingham then, viewers. And we have been hired, as we've just seen, by Nottingham Forest. We are back on the British shores. Unbelievable. Abs I cannot believe we got this job. <laughs> I am really, really shocked. I thought Forest would have laughed us out the door. A championship team taking us. Never would have thought that in a million years. A rich history then at a club. A three-star reputation. Media prediction to finish fifth. 13,500 seater stadium. As we said, a very rich history at this club and hopefully we can add to that. If we do make it up to the Premier League, if not, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, you never know. We may find ourselves looking for another job a little bit higher up that footballing pyramid somewhere after Forest. I kind of want to win the Champions League here at Forest, so I'm not going to lie, just to add to that rich history. This is the best 11. Then Gallagher and Klaus up top. Velasco on the left, Gibbs and Hamer in the middle with Marvin on the right. A back four of Fairclough, we'll have to see how he is, he's a regen. At left back, Haim and Brian in the centre with Fairlong at right back and Dawson in the goal. I don't think I'm going to play 4-4-2, but we'll have to see what players suit a system here. Play attacking football then and develop players using the club youth system of the club culture. The five-year plan to work within the wage budget, sell players for a profit and a minimum of two-year contracts for first-team players. End of the current season, finishing the top half. A fourth-round FA Cup and they aren't judging the Carabao Cup. So we've got a little bit of pressure on us to finish in that top half of the championship this season. And a quick look at the squad then, viewers. Our two best players both have a best position of left midfielder. We could be playing a lot down that left-hand side. Clark Odua, a 26-year-old Kenyan international with 44 caps, 4 goals to his name. Looks like he can play all down that left-hand side, specifically on the left and in the attacking role on that left-hand side as well. A four-star player. Acceleration and pace at 14 apiece is well-rounded. Crossing could be better at 12, I think, for somebody who is one of our best players here. £16,250 a week is a lot of money, but he looks like he would be a first-team starter for us. And our next best player then is Alan Velasco, a 23-year-old Argentinian player. No international caps, but I think he already looks better on that left-hand side. He's younger. I mean, crossing could be better, but we can work on that. Pace and acceleration are near enough the same, but I think technically he looks a lot better. 16 dribbling stands out straight away. Good off the ball, works hard, has decent vision as well. He's composed, makes good decisions. Velasco could be our starting left midfielder. When did he join the club? He joined last season for just £575,000 from Leeds United after scoring eight goals and getting seven assists last year. We'll be hoping he can add to that tally. But already at an average rating of 7.06 and last season 7.11. Sends good signals to me that Velasco could be a very good player for us. 
within the squad then we draw a fairly young squad looking at it just four players who are currently 30 cameron dawson sam gallagher darnell fairlong and dominic heim we may have to look at replacing those two in the defense heim and fairlong keen Bryan is 29 he's the left back as well Kike in the central midfield is 28 alongside Klaus and Hamer. So the first team players are starting to push towards 30, but you never know. They may be able to give us another year or two service here at Forest. Either way, I think this is better than the side that we joined at Bordeaux on age-wise, especially because we've got a more youthful squad, which means we don't have to reinvest as much and we can pick specific positions to try and improve. But I do think there's some real, real talent here. One of the issues that stands out straight away, though, is goals scored. Klaus is the top goal scorer with nine. Then you've got Dale Taylor with six. After that, Liam Gibbs is four. And then you've just got a handful of players who haven't even scored that many goals either. Just two and one between them. Goals is something we need to come back for. That is for sure. And that is summed up in our goal scored. Just 23 goals scored in 27 games so far with 39 conceded. Poor, poor form. Just looking at it there, let's have a look how bad it actually is. Atrocious, absolutely atrocious. We have lost six league games in a row. We've scored one goal in that time, very similar to Bordeaux. We've, we went on a bit of run there where we won two, drew two. Before that, again, another six games lost in a row. Two wins at back to back there, a loss, a win, a draw. Opening, opening bit of the season wasn't too bad actually just one loss in august and then really from the start of all october onwards we've won two games in the league just picking up another two points on top of that as well really really poor sorry three games one and two draws really really poor though and that is something we need to address this sharp drop in form hopefully though with our appointment we can make a change Looking at the positions we've got available to us, viewers, and we're going to start with a 4 to 4 What does worry me is all these dotted lines, which generally means there's poor cohesion between the players. So that is something we need to address, especially when it's, well, it's the defence. Everyone in the defence. So Fairclough and Velasco don't work well. Neither do Fairlong and Gallagher. Him and Adwar in the middle don't work well together. And Brian and Mengi in the middle either. It's going to be very, very tough. At least the, top, the front two, Taylor and Klaus, seem to get on okay. That gives me another thing to question. Uh, that does surprise me in what we've just seen when you look at it, when we've got a core social group, a secondary social group, and the only player that doesn't really fit in is Dawson, the goalkeeper. It does make me worry a little bit that they have just not really seen eye to eye this season, but the, the core social groups aren't really suggesting that, which is odd to me. But the team leaders are Klaus, Fairlong and Gallagher, so... Some of them players aren't even getting on. Fairlong is on the right-hand side. And Gallagher in front of him, they're both team leaders. So if they've got poor cohesion, we need to get that improved very, very quickly. Influential players are Adore and Hamer. And again, they don't get on well in the centre midfield either. So we need to improve that cohesion. I think if we can get all those players pulling in the same direction, things will be looking very, very different here at Nottingham Forest. Plans for the season this second half. We've got money to spend, so we will be dipping our toes into the market. I think we need another striker that's going to try and score us some goals and maybe a little bit of shoring up at the back as well. When you look at this, I think when I say shoring up at the back, we need another central defender. And as I said, goals we need to get as well. No one in the defence has scored. I mean, we've not got goals throughout this entire team, really. Either way, we need to be dipping our toes into this market to improve this team. We've got Watford coming up in the league then, viewers, tomorrow. So what we'll do is, tomorrow game time, we'll play that game now and see if we can pick up a win or a point on our first game in charge here at Forest. Here we are then, our first starting eleven here at Nottingham Forest. A few changes from that first of the best team that we saw then. So Charmin Lowe is in goal for us today as Dawson is not fully fit to start. Fairclough is at left back with Brian and Mengi in the centre with Fairlong at right back. Gibbs and Hamer start in the middle today. They don't really have any bad blood, I say bad blood, any poor cohesion between them. So I think that is important to try and get them playing well. Velasco is further up on the left-hand side. Gallagher is further up on the right. And Klaus and Taylor lead the line for us. Can we pick up, I'm going to say we want a point today. What for the seventh place? Can we open with at least scoring or at least keeping a clean sheet? One or the other and a draw would be absolutely perfect for us. Here we go then, kickoff is here back in England and it's a very, very exciting occasion. We are away at Watford, we are looking forward to bowing to the city ground crowd as well once we get there. However, the first chance did fall to us there, we've had two shots on, well, we've had two shots, one shot on target 
already with 45% of the possession. We need to just improve a little bit. We will demand a little bit more from these boys. 25 minutes in, just that one highlight, which didn't really come to nothing. It was us getting the shot on target and not really troubling O'Leary in that Watford net. Gary into Mumba now for Watford in their yellow and black. The Hornets coming forward. Will they make look to make a sting in our in our tail, let's put a sting in their tail. Mumba into Sheep. Good ball over the top. But there he is. Shaman Low comes out and collects it dressed in all grey today. Mengi. Will this rain affect us as well down here in London? He's teaming down. Will that affect the player? We will remain to be seen. Velasco cuts inside. He's gone all the way. He's got, from his own oh, from his own halfway line. He's had a he's had a shot there. He's come from the halfway line. Done really, really well to work his way through the defence. And that is already a positive sign of the player that Velasco could be for us. 40 minutes gone, we've had more shots. Only two on target, which is a little bit disappointing. Possession is swinging in our favour, but the rain still teams. Down here is Mumba and she is a wonder strike. Oh, it was looking so good for that first 44 minutes and the Forest fans behind the goal are furious at that and I am as well. I mean, Straight out of nothing, Mumba, there's a big gap there, he's shot into, Shaman Lowe's got absolutely no chance, what a wonder strike that is from Bali Mumba, and that takes the wind straight out of our sails, just before half time as well, what an awful time to concede, we've had four shots on target there as well. We're going to pump the fist, tell the boys we've been the better team, keep going and we will be absolutely fine here. We've said that throughout the team as well and it's gone fairly okay. We, When we had the team meeting as well, we managed to get the boys pretty pretty riled up, pretty G'd up as well and looking looking happy to be here once again. I don't think it, well, by the looks of it, was all that good under Nigel Pearson, my predecessor. We will make a change very, very soon, fair long, with a huge throw in straight to O'Leary though, who comes out and collects it very, very easily. He kicks it down now, which we've won back with Fair Club and we didn't really pounce on that Watford mistake there as the rain still lashes down here at Vicarage Road. Another long range effort has seen us concede. Ah, oh, Quan Chang Kun. <sighs> Chang Hoon, sorry, has just leathered that from absolutely miles out. I do wonder if the ball's got a bit more zip on it on this playing field, as I said, because of that weather, but. We shouldn't be conceding there. Shaman Lowe is at sixes and sevens. He's miles out of position there. He's more in the centre rather than to that left-hand side. And that sees us concede once again. Fairlong, he will throw another dart into the box. Velasco's looking for it. Headed away, which Barry picks up. We will make that change after this highlight. Chang Hoon, the goal scorer, plays in Barry. Will he make us pay? Great challenge by Flair Clough into Velasco and Brian. Back and it's come forward. On this left-hand side, Taylor's taking it down very, very nicely on the left. Goes the ball across to Gallagher. Can he finish? Gallagher, there it is. Sam Gallagher with his third goal of the season. Lovely assist from Dale Taylor to pick him out there. And we are back within a shout of drawing here as we go 2-1 down. But we get a goal back. Lovely ball across to find an unmarked Gallagher charging into the penalty area there. And he applies a lovely finish in 67 minutes. And we are now back within a shout of getting into this game. We will make those changes now. Liam Gibbs in the middle of the park is not having the best game so we will bring a duo on i think we'll bring klaus off we've not really said his name so we'll bring jasper on as well we are getting used to these players obviously and marvin will bring him on for velasco he's he's looking frustrated he's one of our better players but if he's looking frustrated he, he's in line for a booking and maybe even a red if he lashes out it's better to have him off the pitch calming down than being angry on it because that could only detriment us it's not been a game of particular highlights but what we have seen, what I've seen from us, I've been quite impressed with. I think we've been unlucky to concede two long-range efforts here. Mal's into night. Chang Hu Mumba again unleashes. I thought I was going to fly in for the third time. Thankfully, it hasn't. And again, I think we've been the better team here. Fairclough, will he launch the ball in? He does, and it's cleared away very, very easily. He doesn't beat the first man. Fairclough gets it back. Hamer into a door. Hamer into Marvin. He's come off the bench into Taylor. Taylor's made it to all. Dale Taylor on our first game as Nottingham Forest manager with three minutes remaining. He has been vital in this game. Finds the back of the net. He's a 61, scored one, and that was a great bit of build-up play there. Absolutely fantastic. Great touch by Marvin to take it round. Taylor finds himself in space and again just applies a neat little finish to the keeper's left-hand side. Dale Taylor's right, and it is in the back of the net looking for a tight offside. 
Oh, he's just on by a good couple of yards as well. And we are very, very lucky there. But Dale Taylor has caused absolute havoc today. There's Watford. Oh, my word. Fair club off the line. I thought we were going to concede straight away. Gallagher comes down on his left-hand side. Can we upset the odds once again? Gallagher's got plenty of room in front of him. He's challenged and the ball deflects back to Watford. And it's cleared away. But thankfully, we are ending the highlight there with two minutes of additional time remaining we have fought back gallantly or oh, have i just spoke too soon chang hoon corner in no pedersen with literally 10 seconds over the additional time has found the back of the net and it is absolute heartbreak viewers oh no it's bounced around that six yard area and watford have scrambled it into the back of the net to steal the three points here at vicarage road Oh, and all the hard work from Dale Taylor has been undone. Pedersen in the 95th minute when there was only four additional played to be played, rather. We're going to point the finger, tell the boys we were unlucky there. I, we were very, very unlucky. We did so, so well to come back to two all, but devastated that we have lost there. We should have got a point from that and should be sitting on 32 points. We wouldn't have moved up the table because our goal difference is atrocious, but it's positive to see us score two goals already. What we'll do is then, viewers, we'll play through the rest of January. We'll get this transfer window closed and see if we can bring anyone into this team. And we will come back for the first game of February against AFC Wimbledon. But if you have enjoyed that, viewers, please don't forget to smash that like button for me. Share the video around and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think of our move here to Nottingham Forest. Was it the best thing for us or should we have stayed at Phoenix on that performance? Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you again for more next time.